Welcome back. Today we are going to grade the first Star Trek episode the world saw on September 8th, 1966. The network chose The Man Trap as the premiere episode to introduce the world to Star Trek. A brief synopsis, a monster murder mystery in space. They lose one point right away due to overlapping star dates with the Corbomite maneuver. While they were on this planet, they were also trapped in space by a flying cube. The first characters you see are Spock in command and Lieutenant Uhura at the helm. Kirk loses one point by thinking picking weeds and calling them flowers will impress McCoy's old girlfriend. Minus one point for beaming down with weapons on a peaceful mission when there are only two people on the planet. Minus one point for having only two people on the planet with such extensive runs. It would be more believable if they were at a remote archaeological site. Of course, that would run the plot completely. This creature has excellent telepathic abilities. It can sense people's thoughts from a great distance and look like someone that each person is thinking of. Darnell's comment is totally inappropriate. You should have asked her that like outside or something. The creature also knows the past of its victims. And Darnell falls for the bait. There he goes. And on September 8th, 1966, this little speech made history. This log simply reminds the viewers of what they just saw in case they forgot during the commercial break, so minus one point. Dr. Crater is unusually hostile and asks for salt. Have you ever wondered what Nancy looks like to Dr. Crater? That's what she said. And Professor Crater loses a point because he's an archaeologist, he discovered an extinct species, and he didn't report it. He would have gotten a lot of credit for it, and none of this would have happened. So Darnell goes down in Star Trek history to be the first one killed on the TV screen, and he has a blue shirt. And he also loses his point for just being stupid and following that girl out there, and he had a phaser, he didn't even use it. With McCoy's first use of He's Dead Jim, Nancy's excuse for looking for him was to uh, tell him she wasn't offended by his comments that he made. So Darnell had to make them in front of McCoy or else the plot wouldn't work. And here's where McCoy is noticing that she actually was a lot older than she did before. He doesn't say anything, but um, he notices. Kirk loses a point for not notifying Spock right then and there and letting him know what happened. This is the second time they asked about salt. This is reused footage of the cage looking through the top of the spaceship. And the first person to bicker with Mr. Spock about logic is actually Lieutenant Uhura and not McCoy. And Spock also admits right here that Vulcan has no moon. So I guess in later episodes we should not see a moon around the blood planet Vulcan. And then report one dead, Spock doesn't show any concern which upsets Uhura. But they should both be concerned that Captain Kirk and McCoy didn't say anything before. They could have called the ship and said, hey, Darnell died out here. The sole purpose of this oversight is to show Spock not showing any emotions, so you lose a point there. How does that thing stay in his ear? And this super sensor computer that measures everything on a body loses a point because it didn't look for any salt in there. It should have said that. McCoy mentions that she looked different for the two times they saw each other, but it is not sinking in yet. A little banter between starship captains. There's not enough of that in those shows, but this one's got quite a bit. Spock's research loses a point, and five years of digging for artifacts, there should be a record somewhere of a creature that can take on any form and suck the salt out of people. Or if the creatures were the race that created the runs in the first place, there would be a record of what they like to eat. And where are these shipments going to? It should be a museum or a university of some sort. Hey, they now just noticed there's no salt in the guy's body. They're starting to put two and two together. Salt tablets. Professor Crater is again confrontational. He mentions other diggings, just how many things do they have? And here we say goodbye to Green and Sturgeon in gold and blue shirts. This is false. It's not his planet at all. I wouldn't have asked for salt in a hot and arid area like that. I would have asked for a water and a water purification system and a big giant air conditioning unit. And Kirk has a bellyache right now. Minus one point, 25 pounds of salt would not have lasted that creature for one year. It would have killed Professor Crater by now and they would have found him dead. Say goodbye to Sturgeon. 
say goodbye to Green. Professor Crater is yelling for Nancy saying he's got salt tablets, but she's uh, getting her own good supply right now. She probably doesn't need those tablets. Mokoi says he's dead a second time. When the creature assumes Green's body, it creates a phaser at his side. The real one is still on Green. Kirk loses a point, not for telling McCoy to stop thinking with his glands, but for not calling up to the ship to start the scanner. Instead, he beams up to the ship to start the scanner, and the creature ends up on the ship with him. This is a good part. Here's where Kirk says, don't forget the body sturgeon. Sometimes they forget him. This is a good scene where the cameraman goes into the turbo lens with Captain Kirk like you're going in there with them. It's really done well. Yeoman Rand loses a point for eating off of Sulu's tray and then putting the celery salt back like he's not going to notice. Green's acting a little creepy here. And the scanner loses a point here. Not only should it pick up Professor Crater, it should pick up two dead bodies because both of them are still pretty warm and Green still had his phaser on it and probably his communicator. It should have picked that up. Yeoman Rand, now the third yeoman in the third episode, tells Green to take a hike and then the crew loses a point for uh, making inappropriate comments about a fellow crew member. She had to stop because the door didn't open. Sulu loses a point. He needs to get his own damn food. And uh, he didn't even notice that half the celery stalk is missing. First mention of the great bird of the galaxy. And Beauregard doesn't look at all like a hand puppet. Not one bit at all. So is it really a good idea to have those squirt bottles so close to your food? And the two of them lose a point because Green is acting a little strange and they didn't notify the doctor. That should have been the first thing they did. Uhura just looks them out of the way. The creature can barely see her but can immediately turn into her dream man. It would be very hard for these creatures to go extinct unless someone went on an all-out war against them. Yeah, the creature is a player. This time the creature is not looking like anyone in particular. It's a character that came out of Uhura's mind. And they both speak Swahili. He can read her mind really good she just walked out the door. And he's got a hypnotic effect on their his victims, which is why Uhura can't get away. Dr. McCoy has a nice set of encyclopedias. Kirk tries to tell McCoy he's been in the Matrix all this time. Here is Barnhart. He'll be gone soon. There might be something wrong with the equipment because it didn't pick up Green's body. Minus one point for not going down with an armed party. They already lost two crewmen. And now another unit takes Kirk's tray. Minus one point. He needs to get his own food. That's probably why the creature can have such a hold over McCoy. Minus one point for this bottle of pills not having a label. It looks like a bottle of Red Hots from here. Now they find Bardhart dead and he's wearing black and white and silver. And Barnhart's eyes twitch. So minus a point there, Barnhart. This transition is done very well in the video, especially since they have a limited budget for special effects. Professor Creator again being strangely confrontational. Barnhart and Green are both found. And then whenever there's a red alert or general quarters alert like this, everybody just runs wildly through the hallways. Now, Spock refers to the creature as the creature. Something is definitely wrong with Professor Crater because no archaeologist would ever do that. This bottle of pills is left open. Did McCoy do that or did the creature do that? Huh. So Yeoman Rand snarls and says it with Refers to Green as it. And Sula says whatever it was. And Uhura said it. Now McCoy says creature. And Sula is like surprised. Shout out to the set designers. You may notice a stone or two moving a little since they are really just styrofoam, but look at all that sand. This is an indoor set. Some poor guy at the end of the day has to sweep all that up. Minus one point, Kirk's flip bone is open. And this one, the uh, stun victim talks a little slowly for a while. He talks about the passenger pigeon, which is extinct, and the buffalo. However, the buffalo now have a stable population. I guess he was expecting them to go extinct in the 1960s. And the first Star Trek episode aired has a shapeshifter. But every time they meet another shapeshifter, they act, holy cow, I never believe I could exist. And Dr. McCoy is trying to reason with them, saying that it's an intelligent animal. But they aren't um, connecting the dots that McCoy might be the creature. Is this the first televised video conference? 
Professor Crater admits he is having a weird, creepy love relationship with an alien creature that killed his wife. That probably blew away the audience of 1966. So here you lose a point. Spock has green and red blood. It should only be green. And now Crater is dead. He... So much for uh, backing up the creature. Now for the showdown. Now, is this the first uh, film footage of a man striking a woman, even though it's not really a woman? And here is the first Trek creature. This is an excellent shot, making it look as if you are the one firing. They even put makeup on the creature after it was shot. But Koi is forced to shoot what he thought was his former girlfriend. And the first Star Trek episode ever aired gets a score of 77%. So ends the first aired episode of Star Trek. What did you think of it? Leave your comments below. Is this creature a real shapeshifter, or just uses telepathy on everyone around it? Which season one episode do you think should have been the first? It can't be the man trap, the menagerie, or where no man has gone before. Place your answer in the comments below, and I will see you again real soon.